Hello there and welcome to another Bowbeats synthesizer video and today we are checking out the new Sonicware Texture Lab. Here it is, let's unbox it. So this is what it looks like and it has a very nice green kind of finish here and overall I think it looks pretty nice. In terms of build it's the same as the other Livens, has this plastic enclosure and it feels okay, it feels like you could drop it, it would survive it, but it's also very plasticky. It has a speaker over here, headphones out, stereo out, stereo line input, we'll get to that. There's also sync and MIDI I.O. on full DIN MIDI jacks, which is always nice. And the keys here and the buttons have the same feel as on the other live ones, which means that they're quite clickety, they're more like a computer keyboard than, say, a piano style keyboard. And the knobs have a fair bit of resistance to them, very plasticky but nice grip. And also these buttons here are nice and mushy. And overall the Sonicware design has actually grown on me quite a bit. I think that the keyboard is easy to play, the buttons are nice and responsive, and the knobs feel nice. So, what is actually the Sonicware Texture Lab? Well, it's a four-voice granular synthesizer. It's also a sampler, so you can sample into it. And it's also a stereo effects processor that lets you take audio from something else, say a drum machine or a synthesizer or whatever you want, into the unit and process it using its granular synth engine. It also sports a fairly advanced sequencer with 128 steps, which I think is new for the Live In series. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm very happy to see a 128 step sequencer. Normally it's 64 steps and that always feels a bit limited. You know, we can handle more steps. So, Really nice to seeing that improvement. And the sequencer is fairly advanced. You can do a lot of parameter locking, basically locking the state of a parameter per step. So you can make really cool and changing sequences like this one. Thank you to Sonicware who sent this synth over to me and also a big thank you to DistroKid who is sponsoring today's video. So if you're looking for a service that lets you upload your music to Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal and other relevant stores, definitely go and check out DistroKid. They are linked in the description of the video and if you use my link you get a discount and you support the channel. And DistroKid is basically a super affordable way to take your music and get it onto all the relevant online stores for music. So go and check it out using my link. So here's an esoteric bell sound that I created. And here I took a guitar sample and just changed it up a bit. Now put some dark, gnarly, moody textures. You want something even more gnarly? Well, I'm up to the task. How about a pad with some high pass? Mm -hmm. 
as you can hear, it has this kind of lo-fi quality to the sound. It's not super like pristine or high definition. And I think that goes for most, if not all, the Liven synths. Now, whether or not you like that kind of sound, well, that's very subjective. I think that especially the Lo-Fi 12 and the Texture Lab has something going for it in terms of its sound. And on this sequence here, I tried to use some parameter locks to create something a little bit more rhythmic. Or how about some totally glitchy madness? This is a preset that it comes with. Oh, you want something more atmospheric? Well, here we go. You can even use Texture Lab to create beats, even though I think that the Lo-Fi 12 is probably the better device if you really want to have like more of a groove box. This is definitely more of a synth, but you can create beats on it. And how about some processed vocals? That's pretty fun. This is a preset that it comes with. Some of the sounds that I played earlier are sounds that I created. You can also use the Texture Lab to process external audio, and that gives you access to the reverb, the cutoff, and the granular synth engine. So how do you actually create music and sounds with the Texture Lab? Well, first up, we have a little sample here. And you use this knob here to select the sample. She said put them again if you don't. I quite like this bell sound here. So what I want to do is take the bell sound and create more of a pad sound. So we're going to start by changing the position and the length of the sample. So we created a very short loop using the longer sample. And now what I want to do is I want to introduce the granular engine. And we have this blend knob here that lets you blend between the sample as it is and the granularity, the granular sound. And here we can set the size of the grains, the sample grains. So we can have very tiny grains. So if we just listen to the grains, And we can have larger grains. And when we have something we like. We can just increase the level of the reverb. Quite beautiful. And we can also change the attack. So just introducing a bit more attack. And we can change the release. and the filter. Introduce some resonance. There's also a timing setting that impacts the gap between the grains. This can also be, as you can see here on the screen, tempo synced. Since it's a shimmer reverb, we can introduce some shimmer. And 
And then there's the density and diffusion knobs, and density basically sets the number of grains. So here we're only listening to, I guess, one grain. And let's introduce more for a full sound. And let's use diffusion to stereo spread the sound. Let's bring in some of the original wave. Now if you want to play with pitch, there's the pitch setting, which I think is just a general pitch of the sample. And then there's also the speed setting, and when you combine them together... We can get some interesting sounds out of it. We set timing back to 12 o'clock to the lush setting and size around here and we just go full granular so using blend here to just listen to the granular sound we get something beautiful if we go up an octave If we go back just to the original sound that sounded like this. And now we have this. That's pretty cool. Uh, and now I think I also want to introduce some modulation. So we have mod 1 and mod 2. And these are basically two LFOs. I think that they can behave like an envelope as well. There's a bunch of different shapes here. I won't go into all the details, but they're pretty straightforward to set up. So use function here, assign, it's set to off. And now we just find the filter. So here we go, filter cutoff. And now to set the depth and the rate, we have rate and depth for mod one over here and rate and depth for mod two over here. It's a little wonky, but it works. So we just set a slow rate and a decent amount of depth for the filter. And we get some filter movement. <laughs> Filters on the Livens are, well, they're not the greatest. I think they could be improved. I think they're a bit sharp, harsh, I don't know. They could be smoother, but they work. So that's how we set up a mod. And there's also fade in for mod one. And there's a retrig for both of them and different shapes. So there's different yeah, waveforms for the modulators, which is really nice. Now that we have a sound, we can create a pattern and you just have to make sure that the metronome is turned on and you can set a count in. Count -ins are amazing. I love count -ins for sequencers like this makes it a lot easier to use. And you just set the length just at the length here, 64 steps, you can go up to 128. So now we want to record some automation. You can do parameter recording and live automation. So if we go in here and we are in the first bar here, and you can move between different bars of the pattern here using these buttons here. And if we're in the first one, we could just hold down a step and then change, say, the position. So let's change the position here for a few steps. I'm gonna change the speed here for these steps as well. I'm not entirely sure how it's gonna turn out, but that's kind of the joy with this little synthesizer. I mean, not too shabby. set up a second modulation here as well as so a function assign here and we can set it to say the length here so the length parameter let's see if we can find it yeah this is the one and then we set the depth here and the rate and with some more parameter locks we have this <laughs> And 
do you actually sample on the texture lab? Well, before I show you this, here's a word from today's sponsor. So DistroKid is a service that lets you upload your music to Spotify, iTunes and other relevant stores. And one reason to use them is the price. They're actually very affordable. Another reason is that once you're a subscriber, you can upload unlimited amounts of music to all the different stores. And they have also launched a super accessible, really easy to use instant mastering service. This new mastering service is called Mixea and it has a super simple to use interface. Anybody can use it. You just drop your music into it and you get one free master download if you just wanna test it out. And then you have to subscribe for $99 a year for unlimited amounts of mastered tracks. And it's really easy. Just drop the track in there. You make some adjustments to it. You can change the intensity Density, the volume of the track and you can change the EQ from sort of brighter to warmer sounding and I was actually pleasantly surprised about the results it sounds pretty good actually you can go check out this trick they are linked in the description and if you use my link you get a discount and you also support the channel okay so sampling on the texture lab is super simple hit function recording and now you see the level of whatever I'm playing and you just press sample and then it waits for a signal and then you see that it samples and I think it's six seconds and now we have the sample and you press OK two and now it says what sample slot and press OK and it saves Now we could just create something out of it. So we went from this to this. Pretty cool if you ask me. So what are some reasons that you might want to avoid buying the Texture Lab? Well, for one, I think that the filter design on all of the live ends, I think, is pretty weak. It's not very smooth. It doesn't have a nice vibe. So if filters are important to you, this just doesn't have a very nice sounding filter. Secondly, the amount of available sample memory uh, is just very small. I don't remember exactly the number of sample slots, but it's, it's very small, it's tiny. Um, and that might be a reason you can only load so many samples into it. I think six seconds is the limit for a sample. So you can have longer samples. So you have a lot to work with because it's a granular synth and you could have a, a changing long sample. You can take out small pieces from that long sample and create many different kinds of sounds from just one sample. However, uh, the sample memory is fairly limited. And then there's the general sound of the unit, like I talked about earlier. It has this sort of gritty, more lo-fi vibe. It's closer to something like the Bastel Micro Granny than it is something like the Lemon Drop. If you want a more pristine sounding granular synth, small, but not portable, not battery powered like this one, then I would actually get the Lemon Drop. I think it's a bit more expensive, but it also has a more high fidelity kind of sound. It sounds more airy, less gnarly, less distorted. Um, this is definitely a bit more lo-fi in its sound. And in terms of workflow, I think that the Live-In series get a bad rep. I think that they're actually quite easy to use once you understand the general design of the unit and where things are located. It's pretty, pretty smooth. And the Texture Lab is actually very smooth to use because it doesn't use this overlay thing that the others use. So everything is just on the unit. You don't have to put on an overlay to know where things are, which is really nice. I hope they keep that sort of design philosophy moving forward. So that was pretty much everything I wanted to say about the Texture Lab for now. Uh, I think I could have done a deeper dive into using it as an effects processor. However, I'm a little bit starved on time because I am moving to a new house. We're renovating our new house. I hope to show it to you soon. Let me know if you want like a house tour, uh, the new home studio tour, all that stuff. And I'm also going to Super Booth, which is just 
next week. So I had to really, like uh, FedEx messed up the delivery of this little synth here and I was a little starved on time, but I think I managed a decent video anyway. And as always, hope to see you in the next video.